Sergio Leone is a film director most known for his movies in the spaghetti western genre. Spaghetti western meaning a western movie made by an Italian. If his name doesn't sound familiar, his movies will. Although Leone has worked on several movies, I will only talk about his two well-known trilogies, The Man With No Name Trilogy and The Once Upon a Time Trilogy. The Man With No Name Trilogy consists of A Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. A Fistful of Dollars is a remake of Yojimbo directed by the famous Akira Kurosawa. It is almost a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but while Yojimbo takes place in the East as a samurai flick, Fistful takes place in the West as a spaghetti western. Kurosawa was a huge influence on Leone and many other directors, but Leone did not give credit to Kurosawa in A Fistful, causing Japanese film distributor Toho, who distributed Yojimbo, to sue Leone and quite successfully. Yojimbo was remade again as Last Man Standing in 1996, directed by Walter Hill and starring Bruce Willis. This time, the story takes place in the Prohibition era featuring gangsters. Fistful featured Clint Eastwood as the man with no name and helped jumpstart Eastwood's career. The man with no name concept came from Yojimbo, which came from a book titled Red Harvest, written by Dashiell Hammett, who popularized hard-boiled detective fiction. Red Harvest featured a character simply referred to as the Continental Op, and his real name is never given in the story. Fistful established Leone's style and set the groundwork for Leone's later movies, where his style would flourish. Ultra-wide shots of barren environments, ultra-close-ups of his characters, and long periods of silence are well-known aspects that would help define his movies. Story-wise, Leone wouldn't give you all of the details and left it up to the audience to figure things out for themselves or to come up with their own theories. The protagonists in his movies were often anti-heroes, characters he wanted you to root for, but were often selfish, only accomplishing things that would benefit themselves, but at the same time, they would have redeeming qualities. Another aspect that stood out to audiences was the film's score by Ennio Morricone. Music in this film is so noteworthy that it helped establish the Fistful as a classic. Later, Leone would work with Morricone in the rest of his films leading up to his death. Morricone's music is catchy and is beautifully integrated into Leone's films. The score reflects the different tones established in the movie scenes, ranging from dreamlike and lighthearted to foreboding and unsettling. Because of the popularity of A Fistful of Dollars, Leone set out to make another western called For a Few Dollars More. Eastwood returned as the man with no name, and Lee Van Cleef came on board as a bounty hunter rival. Leone's signature style returned, and the movie was a success. Other than that, there's nothing much more to say except that I highly recommend this movie. Leone's next film was The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Again, Eastwood returned as the man with no name, The Good, Lee Van Cleef as The Bad, and Eli Wallach as The Ugly, or... Tuco Benedicto Pacifico Juan Maria Ramirez. This movie was a no-holds-barred, Leone at the top of his game, and the story was bigger and more ambitious than his previous two films. Everything came together brilliantly. The acting, the music, the story, the style. No wonder this film is a classic. Leone seemed to be improving his storytelling and fleshing his characters out a little bit. Eli Wallach's character, Tuco, even got a backstory, which is an element not previously seen in A Fistful or For a Few Dollars More. This helped the audience to become a little sympathetic toward Tuco, even though he's a bandit only looking out for himself. By the way, Wallach gives a wonderful performance and practically steals the show. Leone's first trilogy is an important accomplishment in cinema, and each movie was more successful than the last. These movies are forever cemented as classics, and I highly recommend each one. Unfortunately, Leone's future is not so bright after this. Even though the last half of his career is filled with amazing, brilliant movies, no one took notice until later. This was caused by various reasons I will explain later. Leone was not slowing his momentum, and decided to make yet another western called Once Upon a Time in the West. This movie is a love letter to the western genre, and makes numerous references to the classics such as High Noon. At this point, if you've watched these movies, you'll start to see a pattern. Each movie is lengthier, more epic, and less straightforward and a little more cryptic. There are more blanks in Leone's later movies that are left for the audience to fill in. You'll be given some details, but not all. 
On top of that, Leone didn't care how long it would take him to tell a story. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly was about three hours long, and Once Upon a Time in the West is about two hours and 40 minutes long. Some of the scenes in A Time in the West were lengthy scenes with no dialogue. This made movie studios uncomfortable, and is part of the reason Leone's later movies were not recognized. The studios were afraid that people would walk out before they saw the entire movie, so they decided to cut chunks out of the movie for the theatrical release. The runtime was cut short, as well as Leone's vision. And this is the problem. Leone had a particular vision for how he wanted the movie to play out. So when you cut off some of that vision, the movie makes less sense and the rhythm is thrown off. In fact, when it was released in theaters, critics and viewers were not pleased with the movie and it was criticized because of it. Fortunately, the DVD and Blu-ray versions of the movie keep Leone's vision intact. Before, the movie was written off. But now that audiences can now view the movie in full, it is now regarded as a masterpiece. Leone's next movie in the trilogy went by many titles. Duck, you sucker. Once Upon a Time, A Revolution, and A Fistful of Dynamite. For some reason, Leone thought that duck, you sucker, meaning duck your head down, was a common American saying. So the initial release of the movie went by the title, Duck, you sucker. After realizing that audiences were confused by this title, Leone and the studio decided to change the title to A Fistful of Dynamite which is a reference to A Fistful of Dollars. The hope was to get more people to watch the movie with this title change by using the success of A Fistful of Dollars. In Europe, the movie was released as Once Upon a Time, A Revolution. Sir Christopher Frayling, a film historian, recorded commentary for this movie and regarding the European title, stated that he believes that this is a better title because it ties the film more thematically to Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon a Time in America, Leone's final film. Altogether, the three films make up the Once Upon a Time trilogy. I agree and prefer this title. This film features two characters and their unlikely friendship. One is a revolutionary who just wants to fight wars, the other is a bandit not interested in revolutions. The two form a bond throughout the movie, with the Mexican Revolution as the backdrop. Interesting to note is that this movie has a set time period. It takes place towards the end of the Wild West era in the early 1900s. Leone's movies before never had a set time period. The stories just occurred sometime in the Wild West with no exact date given. But now, not only is there a set time period, but Leone also makes reference to a real historical figure, Pancho Villa, a Mexican revolutionary. This time, not only was the runtime of the movie making the studios wary, but the political backdrop did not sit well with them. Again, Leone's movie was cut significantly, making the film incoherent. Once again, the movie did not get the recognition it deserved until years later. If you are looking to buy the movie, I would suggest getting the Duck You Sucker 2-Disc Collector's Edition or the Blu-ray. Both versions feature extras and a wonderful commentary track by Sir Christopher Frayling, which makes them a must-buy. The last film in the trilogy, and Leone's final film, is Once Upon a Time in America. Before shooting began, Leone was asked to direct The Godfather, but ultimately turned the job down so he could work on Once Upon a Time in America. This movie is a gangster flick that takes place in the Prohibition era, starring Robert De Niro and James Woods. The budget and runtime for this movie was larger than ever. The original cut of the film is four hours long. Unlike Leone's other films, this one is played out non-linearly. Instead of showing the story's beginning, middle, and end, it jumps around to different years and chronicles the life of Robert De Niro's character. The movie jumps around so much that multiple viewings may be necessary. The runtime, the plot structure, and violent content in this movie caused the studio to once again trim much of the film down to the bone. To make the film more accessible to audiences, they re-edited the film to be linear and cut it down significantly. Another Leonian masterpiece lost until rediscovered years later in the full DVD cut. Once Upon a Time in America is a masterpiece in storytelling and filmmaking. Again, I highly recommend this trilogy, but I will have to warn you that Once Upon a Time in America is more explicit than Leone's previous movies. Sergio Leone is a master of his craft, and also a cautionary tale. Sometimes studios just need to trust the director's vision. I was being vague about the movie's stories, and some of them I didn't even mention. This was on purpose, because sometimes you just need to experience the movie without someone explaining too much of the plot. Besides, my main goal for making this video was to give credit to Sergio Leone for making incredible movies, and informing others to his incredibly overlooked movies. Almost his entire filmography is filled with masterpieces, and with Once Upon a Time in America as his final movie, I'd say he went out with a bang.